It's nice to see you all. Um, and uh, I, I want to today not preach. This is really not a sermon. It's, uh, it's a, an honest conversation that I'd like to have with us. Um, and I, I hope that uh, you will recognize that I'm taking a risk here today, and I hope that that risk will be met with an openness. Uh, but I just want to begin um, by going back to this beautiful hymn that we started with in the first uh, two lines. It says, we gather together to ask the Lord's blessing. He chastens and hastens his will to make known. And that's, that's kind of the jumping off point today. Um, uh, I, I don't know what your first memory is of your Thanksgiving. Uh, believe it or not, uh, for me, I uh, remember Thanksgiving being ce celebrated back in Jerusalem, at the Americans at Thanksgiving, uh, because we had a lot of expats who were um, you know, who lived there and who uh, constantly visited. And I, I'll never forget, there's this one um, ecumenical center called Tantur. It's near Bethlehem. And uh, on Thanksgiving, as a kid, we would go there, and then there would be turkey. And I remember that was the first time I decided, I really hate turkey. It's just not, it's not my, it's not for me, you know. Um, it was so dry. But, um, uh, but I loved that you know, like the jello stuff that came along. I didn't know what it was, you know, that was like next to it. I just loved that. And, um, and it was just, it was an occasion. It was a, a, a real beautiful uh, festive occasion. Um, and, and I, you know, I remember learning uh, once I got to the U.S. that Thanksgiving is actually the most popular holiday in America because it's, it um, transcends religion. And so people of all different denominations and religions and, and, and no religion, everyone celebrates Thanksgiving. So it's a really beautiful thing. Um, but recently I've started to become much more aware of the fact that Thanksgiving, as widespread as it is, even though it like, you know, is even people in Jerusalem across the world um, um, remember it and celebrate it, is um, that not everybody celebrates Thanksgiving. And I don't know if you all remember um, uh, or an article that came out on um, November 4th this year in the Washington Post that talked about some of the Native American communities who um, are processing what Thanksgiving is, and that Thanksgiving today, this day that we're celebrating, is actually a day of mourning for um, the indigenous people of this land. And I, I, this is where I want to kind of lean in a little bit today uh, and um, invite you to uh, join me with courage. Uh, because it takes a lot of courage to take something that is so sacred, like Thanksgiving, and to uncover it, and just to say that um, this is a day that's beautiful, that we love to celebrate, and it's full of warmth, and we, have, we associate it with so many beautiful smells and tastes. Um, but it is the, the root of this day is in our nation is actually uh, something that is really heartbreaking. And, um, and, and, you know, while we celebrate it and kind of like have washed over it with history, today is the 400th anniversary of the first Thanksgiving uh, that was celebrated in 1621. And to remember that um, uh, the stories that kind of surround this feast uh, are not, that, that we've, we've learned in school and that we kind of think about are not actually entirely true. Like things like, um, the, the, uh, the Wampanoag uh, community were not actually invited to the first Thanksgiving feast. Uh, the reason they ended up actually partaking of the meal is because they uh, heard the festivities and shots fired in the air, and they thought that there was gonna be a, a fight. And so they showed up only to realize, oh no, this was a celebration, and only then were they invited in. Uh, and, and we remember also that the, um, the reason that the um, uh, Native American community that helped these pilgrims, um, that helped them settle in is because they were actually looking for, they knew that their lives were um, being th extremely threatened and they did it as a strategy to see if they could maybe form allyship. And so uh, there, there was so much behind this, um, this day, this iconic day in our nation. Um, and the way that uh, Native Americans remember it today is that that was, um, a, um, that was marking a period of uh, their communities being completely decimated. So it is a, a day of mourning. And, and what I was thinking this morning when I got here, I, I got on this piano, and I just, that's one of the ways I think sometimes and pray is just I start playing some music and just listening to the voice of God. 
And, um, and the one thing that I felt most clearly is that if we were here today and we were asking, okay, God, what are you feeling today on this day? Not what do we want? What do we want to hear? Oh, give us, you know, a nice comforting, heartwarming message on this day so that we can go and just take it into our circles. But what, God, what are you feeling? And I really do believe that what God feels on a day like this, a God who sees time and history, um, is probably two things, maybe, maybe more, many more. This is just me trying with my imagination to grasp what God might be feeling. One is, I think God loves the fact that this is a day for family and friendship and relationships, and that it's a, a day for community uh, and gatherings. I think that brings a lot of joy to God's heart. Um, anytime there's a broadening of, of, of the individual and going into the community, that's a really beautiful thing. And there's ministries out there today, as you know, that are serving and making sure that people who don't have are, are have, have access to um, relationships and, and co connection and to food. So that's really beautiful. There's this other piece that I, I think about through the lens of uh, Psalm 119 that says, God, your justice is from everlasting to everlasting. That, that for God, justice issues don't just get swept under the rug. They are a part of what, how God sees the world. And just because what happened in 1621 and, and, and in the 16 and 1700s and then, and then with other communities in the 1800s and 1900s and, and, and we're to, to where we are today, um, where, where we have sought our own interest at the expense of others, these are things that God does not sweep under the rug. And I really do believe that today God, is, God grieves for what happened to the indigenous people of this land who are still mourning and who are out there today um, celebrating this day with um, acts of remembrance and brokenheartedness. And I think that when I think of where God is, I don't think that God stands with those who say, oh, this is just a great day that you know, was like uh, wonderful, the history is so beautiful and, and there's you know, no, no like heartbreak behind it. I don't think God is even in those spaces. I think God stands with those who are broken and marginalized who've been displaced and who continue to struggle and wrestle with the reality. And so if we were to ask the question, where is God today and how can we align ourselves with where God is? I think it takes a lot of courage. And that's where I, I'd love, you know, oftentimes when we hear messages like this, we say, well, what can we do? And I, I'm, all I'm asking us today, uh, as I, I'm gonna sit down for a moment and invite you to sing a song with me, um, is just to sit with the tension of this that this is a beautiful day. I'm not asking you to go and throw the pie out and say we're not gonna celebrate, you know. Lean into relationships and family. But the way that we are gonna grow as a nation and what I believe God is calling St. John specifically to at this time is to go deeper, to be willing to have the courage to say, if we look at our history, our history is, is pockmarked pop with all kinds of um, things that, that are, we need to look at because our healing is very much intertwined with our ability to look back and to make reparations. And so um, today as we sit here, there's this song that um, came to me this morning, very simple, but I just want you to hear the words, okay? And I'm gonna invite you to sing it with me, maybe if there's just one part of it that stands out so that you can listen also and meditate and not just feel like you're trying to learn a new song. Let us see what you see. This takes a lot of courage, friends. Let us grieve what you grieve. Where you are, we want to be, so let us see what you see. Give us courage, Lord, to follow where you lead, trading what we want for what you know we need. And, um, and then the, the chorus, we'll follow you where you lead us. Where you lead us, Lord, we'll follow you. So let me just sing it for us. and. Use it just to listen, um, and, uh, and let's spend the rest of this sermon time um, soaking in uh, this prayer and singing it to God. And, and again, there's nothing that is needed of us today except to open our hearts with courage, and we'll just let God do what God does uh, as we move forward. Let us 
Thanksgiving, where we give you thanks for your abundance and your provision. We ask that you remind us that we are your hands and your feet. And when we think about providing for all people, God, that it is your vision for us to be a people who see what you see and who grieve what you grieve so that what is needed, the resources, the dignity, the hope, reconciliation, 
can reach those who have been alienated and who have been discarded by our communities. So we pray for courage today, God, and we pray that this would be the start of a, a way more meaningful experience of thanksgiving than we've had in the past. And we pray, Lord, um, that you would honor this attempt on our part to be courageous, uh, even if it uh, lead us, leads us into uncomfortable places.